So everything in today's video, I wrote about in more detail in Make Your Own Rules, but I wanted to share a couple of the most important things with you. One is the main strategy I used to grow my YouTube channel by a million subscribers in 18 months. A lot of what I talk about in this book is trying to encourage creative people to consider being open-minded about business and organization and self-promotion and a lot of things that I think we often don't feel like we gel with, but I think you can engage with them and I think you can even find ways to enjoy them and that doesn't make you any less of an artist. And I'm totally from that camp. I was so flighty and spontaneous with my creativity and just did whatever I felt like at the time without thinking ahead too much. I did so many things wrong and had to figure things out by trial and error, but I found that putting in just a bit of strategic work really allowed my creativity to flourish and helped a ton of my dreams come true. If anything, figuring out these boring things with money and time management and all that made me more of an artist because they gave me the resources and the free time to be able to create a hundred times as much. So that's the first thing. I would love to help as many creators as possible build sustainable careers. The second thing is that as wonderful as it is to have millions of followers, it's so much more important to be yourself and do what you love. And as we'll see, sometimes these things go together and sometimes they don't. So here's the diagram we're gonna talk about today. It's a Venn diagram where these five things overlap in different combinations. And this is what I came up with when I wanted to take a really serious shot at growing an audience. At the point of my career where I arrived at this, I had honestly just been flailing around for years. And I was lucky enough that it had been working. I was doing a uh, song commission business. I'd make music in any style for anybody who happened to find me. Fun fact, this started with me posting my music skills as eBay auctions because it was pre-Fiverr, pre-social media. I pretty quickly moved from eBay to just my own website and I never actually put any thought into trying to find clients. They all just found me because I was also creating fun music content, just because like, I was just having fun. And I never really made the connection that if I created more content, it would increase the odds of people being able to find me. I was just posting stuff randomly. And sometimes I'd go for months without posting anything. I was going about this with no intent, no business brain. And uh, I just felt lucky that I had stumbled into a music related job. Other smarter people around me would occasionally bring up ideas about like business expansion and delegation and marketing. And I would just scoff at that. And my attitude was like, I'm indie and I'm DIY and it's cooler that I can make my business work without having to think about those things. But as my audience and my clientele and my network slowly and haphazardly grew, I found that the musicians who were the most successful all seemed to be approaching it like a business in some way or another. There were TV composers that very diligently put in 40 hour work weeks. There were bands, even very DIY ones, who were super strategic thinking about their tour stops and which merch had the best margins and dividing up all the logistical tasks between the band members in a very organized and efficient way. And none of this kind of stuff took away from the fact that they were doing what they loved. And so I slowly realized that maybe a bit of strategy would be helpful for me, and this is what I came up with. The five things on the Venn diagram are what I wanna do, what makes money, what's worked well before, what's trending, and what I'm good at. I thought these were the five most concrete items through which I could filter all my ideas so that I could propel my career the fastest while keeping it anchored to what I wanted to be doing. For a while though, I didn't have any ideas that fit all five of these things. I had a lot of ideas that fit four of them, so I decided that that would be my plan. If any idea fits four of these circles, then I'll do it, and if it doesn't, then I'm not gonna touch it. So I was looking at this inner ring of petals. That's where I wanted to be with any project I took on. At the time I was doing this thing where I'd try to come up with 10 ideas a day. So I had hundreds of ideas and I basically just went through them, filtered them through this and um, put all the ones that fit the bill, all the ones that were somewhere in the pink part here in a giant spreadsheet. And on the one hand, I did have the thought that I was gonna be letting business considerations determine what I would choose to work on creatively. But at the same time, I had so many ideas, I knew I'd never be able to do all of them. So it just felt like, well, I think all of these ideas are cool anyway. I may as well do the ones that are good for business. So 
So I had this spreadsheet going and uh, this is a fake version because if I show you my real one, you'll see the vast majority of what I'm planning to make over the next five years. And by the way, if you buy my book, one of the bonuses you get is some custom spreadsheet templates. So I'll share this content planning sheet with you. And there are also some other ones like a customized daily to-do list that I use. And there's another one that helps me finish the music that I'm working on. So here's the content planning sheet. It's evolved a bit over the years, but the point of it is to gather all of my content ideas in one place, as well as help me determine what I should work on next and can work on next. I used to have a column where I'd estimate how long I thought a project would take me, but um, I don't know, maybe that would work for you. I found that for me, I wasn't a very good estimator. And also some video projects are just so big, they're broken up into all different kinds of chunks and there are contingencies within that. So um, yeah, just got rid of that. But I have a lot of other ways that I help myself determine what I should be working on. There are three levels of priority. So A is like absolutely must, do. B is more like, I'd really like to get to this sometime in the near future. And uh, the triple Z is the snooze button. It's basically like, I still really like this idea, but I just don't see a time in the near future where I'm gonna be able to get to it. So it's like a, a postpone. I also go through the list every few months and straight up just delete stuff if I feel like, you know, the time for that idea is gone or it's not worth it or I've lost interest or whatever it might be. So constantly culling the sheet, but also definitely adding to it with all the ideas that are always coming up. There's a due date column. Sometimes I'll sort by this, but usually that's just a, kind of a reminder for me so I'm not like hopping back into my calendar. Or if I've added a lot of ideas at a time, it can help me uh, sort out my priorities. We've got two columns that tell me what type of content it is, so the platforms that it's gonna go to as well as what type of video it is. And with both of these columns, I'm just wanting to make sure that I keep the right balance of stuff. I very much like having a variety channel, so I don't want any one of these formats to take over, which is actually bad YouTube advice, by the way, but um, I'm just doing whatever I want. And we'll talk more about that later. These columns with the X's in them though, are what really allow me to be efficient because I sort by these to work in batches. And these are sort of the most common uh, setups that I'll have for creating content. So float is my shorthand for like, the cameras could be anywhere. I'll be moving them around a lot during the shoot. Vlog means like it's a locked off talking head angle. Today's video is a kind of in between those two. And hey, as you can see, sometimes there are multiple X's for one video. Top is whether I have a top down angle going. Comp is whether I'll be screen recording on my computer. Phone means I'm gonna be filming on my phone. And team means that I will not be touching the cameras and my crew is gonna come in and they will film me. So I just mark what's applicable with an X and then I can sort alphabetically to see what videos can be batched together. And then this allows me to just deal with way less setup. My crew can come by here and we'll film two or three videos in one day. This is all about saving time and eliminating friction because with every piece of content, you gotta get your lighting going. You gotta make sure your SD cards are fresh. You gotta dump the SD cards afterwards. You gotta look somewhat presentable the days when I'm not on camera, guys, <laughs> I mean, I don't know how you feel about this right now, but uh, it gets a lot worse. <laughs> So I had my Venn diagram and I had my spreadsheet and then I committed to a two video per week schedule every Monday, every Thursday. And I just worked my way through this spreadsheet. I usually pick the idea that would be the easiest to do. That worked great for a while, but it had the side effect of slowly making everything harder and harder and harder. But the content that came out of the ideas that were filtered through this sheet just performed much more consistently than all the random stuff that I had been doing before. And eventually I did find the thing that went right in the middle here, a type of video that fit all five of the parameters on my Venn diagram. And uh, as if to prove that this worked, they were and still are the most consistently high performing videos on my whole channel. Almost all of the videos in this format got over a million views. Move. Covering trending songs using weird things that aren't instruments. 24 karat magic in the air. 
what's trending? The songs were trending. Uh, they were very highly searched for on YouTube, so my videos would surface in those searches. I guess they'd probably be recommended because the algorithm also knew that the topics were trending. What's worked well before? Well, I had done all these found sound videos. People love to watch me sample weird things, so that worked. And then once I did it with covering songs, it just became a great format. If it's worked well before, it's got a good shot of working again. What I'm good at, there were not a lot of people at the time, um, and maybe proportionally, there still really aren't, uh, making music using weird, weird samples. Like people sampled records or, you know, people use exotic instruments, but to just use like carrots, pants, balloons, not many people were doing that. And so by default, I was one of the best doing it. And then as for what makes money, um, you know, directly these videos didn't make as much money because uh, covers couldn't be monetized in the same way as regular videos but they just reached so many more people. There was this trickle down effect to uh, the rest of my content. And then on top of that, I would be contacted by companies who wanted me to do commercial work for them, making music using their product. Create a dish in perfect harmony. And it was what I wanted to do. I had so much fun making these videos. I loved making these videos until I didn't. At a certain point, I'd done a bunch of these videos and it just got boring to me, so I stopped. And uh, they still fit four of these circles, but I realized that if I wasn't enjoying myself, what was the point? I guess views and money would have been the point, but uh, they weren't pointy enough for me. So I stopped making that type of video, and around this time I also just made way fewer videos. I was getting burnt out from doing YouTube seven days a week so that I could maintain this upload schedule that I had decided on for myself. So I stopped with the schedule, and sometimes I'd go for a really long time without posting anything, and I just needed to recalibrate. And all my metrics took a nosedive, you know, I used to get five million views a month, and then it dropped down to a few hundred thousand. I used to grow by 50,000 subscribers a month and that went down to like 2,000. But I saw that if I wanted to continue chasing that ridiculous explosive growth, I would just be completely unhappy. And you know, growing by 2,000 followers a month, getting a few hundred thousand views a month is still a tremendous privilege. I had to be grateful that I still had this audience that was interested in the new stuff that I was doing. This had brought me really far, but I realize now that it was time to just focus on, oh, well, should have tested if the highlighter worked before. We'll just, yep. I guess I didn't even do that right because it should only be the part of the circle that's not overlapping. Anyway, I had an opportunity to work on just what I wanted to do and it might mean a smaller audience and it might mean a pay cut, but I would get to do what was most meaningful to me. And I think in a lot of ways, it's more meaningful to those of you who are still with me, like making all these music tools, writing this book, uh, the videos going so much deeper into the creative process. These other circles are still great when they show up, but I'm only really worried now about this one. I actually did have a moment of weakness once where uh, I hadn't made one of those found sound cover videos in over a year, and then I decided to do Seven Rings by Ariana Grande with rings. That video got two million views. I didn't enjoy working on it, and I've never made that type of video again. In fact, with one exception, I've never had another video get that many views again. But it just proved to me even more that this is all that matters to me anymore. I was really fortunate that at one point in my life there was something that fit in that middle spot on the diagram. Uh, this is a fantastic template for business and audience growth. But that time is over for me now and my mental health is way better. And I have new goals and dreams that aren't just about trying to have the biggest possible audience. Make Your Own Rules is one of those. I wrote this to help a lot of people level up and move past the blocks in their life. And I don't just mean like the social media tips and tricks, although that's all in there as well, but organizing my thoughts in writing like this allowed me to just go so much deeper than I can in a YouTube video. And I really believe that the wisdom and the perspectives I've been able to share here about creativity and career stuff and just life in general will be able to help a lot of people out, will be affirming 
potentially even life-changing. Uh, so I hope you'll check it out. There's more info at andrewhuang.com book. Make your own rules.